Okay. Welcome to the Beaver Brook Art Gallery Conversation Series. My name is Christina Thompson. I'm an art educator and photographer. And joining me today is Maura Davey, a photographer, filmmaker, uh, also works with text publications. And her work can be found in major public collections like MoMA, The Met, the Tate Modern, and now the Beaver Brook Art Gallery. I'm really excited that we, we have this addition to our collection as we continue to build our contemporary photography collection. So welcome, Laura. Thank um, you. I'm so glad to have you. I know you were born in Toronto, uh, grew up in Montreal, but you live in New York and you do have a connection with Fredericton though, with some family here. And last spring, I was invited by uh, the curator, Johnny LaRue, to join your cousin, Laura, and her children in receiving your photographs at the art gallery. And they, the work was received in honor of Laura's um, husband who passed away from cancer. So I'd love to talk about that work and the method of mailing. You have a very um, unique way of mailing your, your photographs, right? It's unusual because mostly artwork is um, packaged, protected, so precious, so fragile, and you kind of take that away. You want the photographs to be completely exposed on their journey. So can you can you talk a bit about that choice first, and then we'll move on to some of the other topics? Sure. I, you know, for for years, I I you know framed my photographs. I mount. I matted some photographs. I. But I would often just put them up behind glass. I like to do that with gelatin silver prints. Um, and then, you know, around 2000 and when was it? Around 2003, I decided to take a break from making photographs. I wanted to write. I wanted to work in video. I felt like I'd kind of, um, I'd sort of come to an impasse with with the way I'd been working in photography, and I. I just wasn't sure where to go next. And I felt um, I felt inspired to write and and to uh, to work with the moving image, which I had done. Like I had made a film, a short film in 1990, a Super 8 film, and I had worked in video as you know, when as a graduate student and and a bit in film, 16 millimeter. So it wasn't um, you know, it wasn't something completely new to me, but I decided I was gonna write and hopefully the writing would become a video. And that happened. The video is called 50 Minutes. Um, I think I finished it in 2006. And so I wasn't making any photographs for about five years, I think. And then I was in Paris for 10 months. I had a, a studio at the Cité. It was a Canada Council grant. And I got an invitation to be in a show in, in New York, uh, a summer group show. And, you know, the idea of uh, creating photographs and sending them, you know, overseas was totally unappealing. And I remembered that I had folded up and mailed some photographs to John Goodwin for a show of mine that he did at Goodwater. He was actually showing that video, 50 minutes. And, mm -hmm. He asked me to fold up some pictures so that he could make a little poster. And then he ended up showing, I think I sent about 15 or 16 different um, photographs. They were just frame grabs from the video. He ended up showing those photos as a piece. And I didn't think too much of it until I got this invitation when I was overseas. And I thought, I proposed to the gallery that I do the same thing that I just make, you know, make some photos and fold them up and send them and they would be, you know, opened up and just pinned to the wall in the gallery. And that's how it started. And I, I loved, it was a new way to engage with photography. I was, um, I was uh, compelled to take photographs again, knowing that there was this very easy and direct way that I could, I could just deal with the photograph as, as a kind of giant postcard as Chris Krebs described it. And that it, it would be um, not this, this precious object that you, you know, has to be perfect. Like 
you know, if a photograph has a little, mm -hmm. a color photograph has a little ding in it, you, you can't, <laughs> you can't show it, you have to remake it. It's, they really are so fragile and they have to be protected. Mm -hmm. So I love the idea that this was exactly the opposite of the way people usually treat photographs and, mm -hmm. and that there was something just so direct in the way that I could take pictures. There was a great lab there that would print them out um, 12 by 18, which folds down to letter size. You fold it in half and then two more times. And it was all so just, it could be, it was a way of being able to work spontaneously that, that I really loved. And, um, and for that piece that I sent to Marie Guy Gallery in New York, I ended up taking photographs of graves in the cemeteries where I'd been working on a video. That's what my, my, my grant, the project um, uh, for my grant was to make a video. And so I, I took photographs of writers' graves, you know, like Baudelaire and Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir. Their graves are covered with metro tickets and train tickets. It's a, it's a kind of a, a ritual that happens in the cemeteries in Paris. You know, if people kind of make a pilgrimage to a sort of a pilgrimage to, to visit a writer's grave, they leave a token of passage. So the, the I took photos of graves, the writer's graves. And then I also photographed tables at outdoor cafes after people had left. So whatever was on the table, coffee cups, a crumpled napkin, some coins, um, a water glass, you know, just like evidence of, of an encounter or even, or, or a solitary um, moment that someone had um, at a cafe. And those were, though that became the piece, I think it was called 15 Photographs from Paris. There were a few photos of my studio in there, I believe. Um, so it it was it was a successful piece, and and from there I I continued to 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 um, to work in, in the same way because it was um, it offered me something. So it started with photos mailed from Paris to New York, and now we've received a selection in Fredericton. Tell me about the four images we have here at the Beaver Brook. Here, yeah, you see them in my studio. And um, so before I mail, mail off photos, I, I arrange them so that people know when they arrive uh, how, to, how to hang them. I send a snapshot, I send them, I send a snapshot in advance to Laura and the curator. So I, Laura and her family came to New York one summer. Um, Laura would know the date, I don't remember exactly, but I live in Washington Heights, which is not very far from the Cloisters, which is this, um, um, it's, a muse it's a museum of medieval art, I think in, in um, uh, largely medieval art. It's, I believe it was, it was started, it was built by one of the Rockefellers who imported pieces of abbeys and cloisters and all, you know, buildings, uh, religious uh, buildings in Europe and, and built, you know, put, put all of these um, architectural fragments together and made uh, an incredible building it's, that became a museum. He might have lived there, I'm not sure, but it's now, it's owned by the Metropolitan, but it's its, it's, its own thing. It also has a medieval garden full of herbs um, mm. and some amazing plant, uh, um, like there's a pear tree that grows flat against the wall. I think it's a pear tree and the garden is full of fruit trees. It's, it's quite a, it's quite a stunning place. So since I live close, fairly close to the cloisters, it's maybe like 15 minutes uh, by bus. I think we all took the bus and went up there and spent time in the museum and time in the garden. And um, 
so I started with one photograph from the cloisters because that was like my strongest memory of uh, spending time with uh, Robert and Laura and the kids and uh, the memory of being at the cloisters with them. So I started with a photo of a stained glass window at the cloisters, which I didn't actually photograph when I was there with them. I'm pretty sure I did it on another occasion. Yeah, exactly. There it is. He's a, he's a, he looks like he's sowing wheat or, um, or cutting down wheat. Maybe he's holding a scythe or something like that. He might be a mythical figure. I'm not sure, but it was from the cloisters. And, um, and so that's why I chose it. And then um, you can see it's got a butterfly stamp. I like to use, I like to use the butterflies a lot. Um, that stamp is actually specific <laughs> to um, mail that is supposed to, supposed to get processed in a particular way. I think it's, it's as non-machinable, but sometimes they do go through a machine. Um, but yeah, I use that butterfly stamp quite a bit. I, the green tape I, I used in, in the beginning. And then I started using, um, you know, when I first mailed these and folded them up and, and used tape, I had no idea that this pattern would, um, you know, that the, the, the photo would end up with this pattern created on the surface by the tape. And once I saw that, I started to play with it and I started to play with the different colors of tape. And, um, mm -hmm. But I originally used this tape, which is, is like one of the cheapest tapes you can buy at a hardware store. It's painter's tape, mm -hmm. actually. But I've, I've always liked it because of, it has a sort of neutral quality and, um, it has a way of just kind of like, yeah, sitting in a kind of flat way on the photograph, not really calling that much attention to itself. Often I use really bright colored tapes for the opposite effect. Like I'll use mm -hmm. almost fluorescent pink and orange. Right. So yeah, I, I then went on to pick other photos from my archive that I thought would you know work well with this image. I believe these stones are from a cemetery in Europe. And they were just like fragments of stones that were probably from grave stones, but they were just kind of laid, laid out. The spider in the glass is actually from um, my house in Sullivan County, we get, we get giant spiders. Yeah, and, that's huge. Yeah. That is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be a wolf spider. I um, remember when this, this one was opened, we all kind of jumped. <laughs> like, wow, that is a huge spider. <laughs> I mean, you really get this, the human scale with the hands there to make you realize just how massive that is. Mm -hmm. And then the lower left is a page. Um, I believe it's from the printed, it's from the published edition of Mary Shelley's Diaries. Mm -hmm. And she's a writer who I've spent a lot of time with, um, reading her, writing about her, writing about her mother, Mary Wollstonecraft. Uh, mm -hmm they um they that the whole that whole family figures in in a video i made called lego dallas and i've 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 gone to the shelley archives at the new york public library and photographed original manuscripts and letters for, uh by uh, um in in their hand mary shelley and mary wilsoncraft and the journals of Mary Shelley's uh, stepsister, Claire Claremont. So mm -hmm. that um, they, and she would often write in code. 
So S, you know, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk is pro she's probably referring to Percy Bish Shelley. Okay. Um, hmm. So yeah, I made photographs that were just like details, either of you know the original script or the published version of the diaries and. I think I liked, one of the things I liked in this piece was, you know, paper, glass, stone, mm. glass again with, mm -hmm. with the wheat, um, mm -hmm. you know, just something about the, you know, the, the glass, the inverted glass with the spider and then the, the, um, the wheat, um, the wheat figure on stain, you know, painted on stained glass at the cloisters. I, I think I, you know, I just sort of like, liked something about those associations and, um, mm. and also, you know, just the, the sort of elemental nature of each of these photographs. I love this elemental reference and learning the meaning behind these images. You had a big exhibition at the National Gallery in Ottawa that was wrapping up just as we received this work. That exhibition was called The Faithful, and it's traveling to the Leonard and Bina Allen Gallery in Montreal in 2022. So tell us about that show. We did this show. It's a survey of like almost 40 years of work. It has... Um, it has my newest video, I confess. It had my newest video, I confess. Um, mm. Um, and they, um, it had, I think five or six videos altogether. Actually, some of them were projected. They had a be they had a beautiful theater for the Lego Des trilogy. I'm very happy with that show. And they also produced a book. Do I have it here? I do. This is the, this is the book that accompanied mm. the show. And it's kind of a hybrid book because it's, and it also actually, it has, um, it comes with a facsimile of one of the oh. photos. Yeah. There it is. Ooh. So that's inside the book. But yeah, like I was saying, it's a hybrid because it's kind of part artist book. Mm -hmm. And, but it also contains two uh, really long, beautiful researched essays, one by the curator, Andrea Cunard, and one by the political theorist, uh, Dali Giroux, who figures in the video, I confess. So yeah, I'm really so oh, wow. happy. Yeah. Well, okay. well, thank you so much for, for taking the time to have this conversation and talk about your work and talk about your connection here to Fredericton. Um, and I'm really excited about the exhibition in 2022. Yeah, thank you, Christina. It was really, really lovely to talk with you.